Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech, Hawaii. When I was uh, thinking about my two distinguished guests today, I was thinking of, we know there's a win, and there's a win-win, and there's a win-win-win. But when I was thinking about what these gentlemen have to offer, I just kind of ran out of wins. Let's see. First and foremost, they will be employing people. Lord knows we need to employ people these days. And that's this is at a living wage, mind you. Then they will be reducing the bills, the utility bills of their clients. That's always a very nice thing. And in, re, in addition to that, they will be supplying not just regular lighting at a vastly reduced energy use, but anti-COVID lighting also, where they will be trapping the, those nasty old COVID and extinguishing them. And what happens when you get rid of COVID? You create a safer Hawaii, safer for the staff working wherever, and you bring more tourists in and Lord knows we need more tourists to gain more employment, to hire, have more taxpayers to increase the state revenue, which will in turn open up the economy any even more. How many wins is that? I, I've definitely, definitely lost count. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce first Anthony Amendola. He's the B, uh, the Chief Financial Officer for Energy Advisors. And Energy Advisors, he's going to explain how you can do all these wonderful things without any money up front. And not only pay off the loan, but sponsor this anti-COVID technology that I was just describing. And we have also Andrew Miller, of VP sales, nationwide VP sales of FSC lighting. They do all kinds of lighting projects. So they will be supplying both visible and UVC lighting or ultraviolet uh, COVID killing lighting. And if I were to introduce them by their bio sketches, it would take up half the program. Suffice to say, that they have both been in this business very successfully for a long, long time, although they certainly don't look it. So, Mr. Andrew Miller, please take it away and tell us what kind of technology it is we're getting into. All yours. Uh, aloha and uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, present. My name is Andy Miller with FSC Lighting, uh, Vice President of Sales. Uh, we're an organization that has been in business for over 50 years now, based in Southern California. We go nationwide and into Canada. So today, uh, what we normally do is uh, talk about uh, some of our lighting applications and retrofit opportunities. Uh, so we, we do a lot of that, uh, that for educational office space, uh, commercial buildings uh, uh, across the country. Today, we're bringing out what's called our uh, our safe class uh, solutions. If you want to uh, put up the uh, first slide there, please. Thank you. Uh, so there's a picture of a, uh, that is actually a Walmart distribution center and down below is a, uh, a picture of our facility. Um, today we're going to talk to you about uh, um, air and surface disinfection solutions. We're really going to be concentrating on the air disinfection solutions that we can provide. So a little background, uh, if you want to put up the next slide, please. Uh, UV lighting is natural. It uh, comes from the sun. Uh, UVA lighting is uh, your what uh, gives you a sunburn or oxidizes uh, your paint job on your car. And uh, that uh, um, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, that UVA lighting uh, and using that to disinfect. And we're also going to talk about uh, UVC lighting. Now, UVA lighting, 95% uh, of that uh, reaches the, uh, the, 
uh, from the sun reaches the, the surface of the earth. UVC lighting is completely uh, 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 captured by the ozone layer. So uh, natural UVC lighting never reaches the, uh, the surface of the earth. Uh, in both cases, we are using uh, both UVA and UVC above the, uh, uh, out, of, out of sight from the, uh, in a light fixture. So I want to be very clear, we're not putting this into a space where humans are going to be present. It is going to be a, 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 a above the, uh, the ceiling tiles. The next slide, please. So we have two uh, ways to uh, disinfect uh, a space. One is uh, through air and one is through surface. Uh, we're going to focus here on the air disinfection. Uh, if you look here on the the left, there's a picture of a, uh, a light fixture with an exhaust fan. And if you go over to the, uh, uh, what we're doing is we're gonna pull the air from a space, uh, a room into that exhaust fan and we're gonna disinfect it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in a second. As you can see here, your pathogens are in the middle of that pic of the room. They are pulled into that, uh, that exhaust fan. And then we are gonna port that, uh, that clean air out up to uh, eight feet away from the exhaust fan, uh, creating a so what's called a convection. Mm -hmm. So you'll you'll basically have the air come and float down at a neutral air pressure, and then we'll uh, it'll float down into the space uh, so that the air that's sitting towards the top of the of your uh, uh, near the exhaust fan will be pulled into the space, and you you will continuously clean your, your airspace. And I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the process that uh, uh, from a technical standpoint. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, this is actually a process. There are two filters. The first filter is a titanium dioxide filter that, uh, that uh, is replaceable. And uh, as soon as pathogens hit that filter, what, what takes place is the the, uh, uh, it becomes, it starts to oxidize. Uh, so the pathogens, uh, think of it as if you've ever had a cut on your, uh, on your hand and you've taken uh, hydrogen peroxide and poured it onto, your, onto the cut, it starts to oxidize or bubble. That's what's going on inside that, uh, that first filter. Then the air flows over to the UVA chamber. So we start to, we begin to really oxidize and uh, start to eliminate the pathogens, both, both uh, bacterial and viral. Uh, and that's inclusive of mold and funguses. Then we take that air and put it into the next portion of the chamber, which is the UVC chamber. That's where the irradiation uh, process happens. And, and uh, everything is, uh, eliminated 99.9%. So uh, there's, it, it happens fast. Uh, COVID-19 takes around 26 seconds to be eliminated. Uh, a, a flu virus takes around uh, 34 uh, seconds. So as a flu virus cell is actually a little bit thicker and tougher to destroy versus uh, uh, COVID-19 SARS-2 virus. Uh, that being said, then it goes to the, the last filter, which is a charcoal filter, which is also replaceable. And uh, then we, we put the air back into the space at a neutral air pressure. And the idea there is that we're not pushing the, or forcing the air into the space, uh, potentially churning up other pathogens that could be uh, 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 present in, in a room. So it's a, it's a fast process. Everything is above the ceiling tile, above the plenum uh, that takes place with UVA uh, and UVC. So nobody is ever exposed to UVA or UVC from our, from our uh, clean box light fixture. Uh, the last slide. So in this last slide, we talk about uh, the, there's no ozone. They're uh, emitted uh, from or created by this uh, fixture. Uh, we are also uh, cleaning, have the ability to surface disinfect with blue light, four, five, and 470 nanometers, which is safe to be under. But that's uh, the, the key here is to be able to take the air from the space and re remove the, t the pathogens uh, 
uh, above the plenum. Uh, also, that uh, that box does have a, uh, a, a if you if you break the seal on the box, it does have a kill switch in it. So uh, again, no human is ever uh, exposed uh, to UVA or UVC lighting. It's uh, it's dangerous stuff. So we have to be very very careful and make sure that it's above the uh, plenum. But this happens fast. It, like I said, it, uh, there is a, a list of bacterial uh, types of cells that it also uh, destroys, like Listeria and Salmonella and E. coli. Uh, but uh, this is a, a, it's a fast, easy way to uh, have a room. Uh, and, and if, if anybody's been talking, learning about uh, what uh, how, how COVID nineteen spreads. Uh, it spreads through the air much faster than it ever does on a surface. Uh, and that's put out by the CDC. Uh, that concludes my presentation, Howard, and I uh, appreciate uh, the time. Hmm. Well, let, let's uh, dig a little deeper here. As you and I were discussing before the program, the best analogies that I've seen for the COVID aerosols, these are the tiny, tiny, tiny little particles that come out of our mouths as we're speaking. And the analogy was with cigarette smoke. Yes. Picture somebody smoking. They're initially, they blow out the smoke and it's really thick and then it dissipates. And what you don't, this is why distancing is so important. The further from that cigarette emission you are, the weaker the smoke will be. And that also relates to air circulation. So you were talking about circulating the air in the room. The better yes. the circulation, the less the density or the dose of the COVID. Most of us can handle some COVID coming into our nasal passages, but we can't handle, and we, our immune system will take care of it, but we can't handle heavy duty, dense doses. So the better the circulation, the weaker the dose. So I'm very uh, glad and, to see that. And, and I'd like to add, uh, Howard, that uh, this is a continuous uh, application. So we are continually cleaning the air. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as that exhaust fan is on, you are, you are uh, disinfecting the air in the space. Uh, it is not mm -hmm. like an HVAC system where uh, once you hit that set point on your, uh, on your HVAC system that uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. HVAC turns off. Turns this off, is continuous yeah. uh, ongoing process, which can mm -hmm. happen uh, all day long. And then you certainly mentioned safety features. So far, these, this technology is young enough where the FDA or UL have not come out with clear guidelines yet so that manufacturers such as yourself need to voluntarily uh, not subject themselves, comply with all applicable guidelines on a voluntary basis. And I, I see that you yeah. are doing that. We, we actually are uh, uh, both EPA and FDA uh, listed, uh, mm -hmm. as well as uh, UL. So the, there's, there are three, uh, ap actually three different listings where FDA uh, listed, uh, EPA listed as, uh, because this is, uh, UV lighting is, a pe is considered a pesticide because you are, uh, 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 killing pathogens, you're killing something. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, it is a, uh, and we're all obviously uh, UL listed as well. That uh, that those both those two filters are also replaceable. So uh, this is a, a sustainable product for not just uh, COVID nineteen, but ongoing. Uh, there's going to be something else down the road. Yeah. And we we should mention that go into any hospital room and you're probably gonna find some kind of disinfecting technology in there. And when you go into say an operating room or an ICU intensive care unit, you're probably gonna find a lot of this type of technology there, continuous heavy duty sterilization. So what yes. we're wanting to do is, what I'm wanting to do is bring it into say hotel rooms, hotel lobbies, restaurants, bars, shops, to help to make the, those environments safer and open up the economy all the faster because fewer and fewer and fewer people are uh, getting sick. So I yes. certainly uh, commend you on that. If you Google 
UV lighting, you're going to find hundreds of products out there, literally hundreds. Most of them are very small, very low wattage. And you will notice that they have a lack of any kind of certification. Now, you, you put yourself at risk by buying uh, inexpensive, uncertified uh, products. But on that cheery note, I would like, now that we know what the technology is, let's see how in the world we can finance this and not only pay off the loan for the lighting, but finance the COVID zappers as well. Take it away, Mr. Anthony Amendola. Aloha, Howard. Thank you so much for taking the time and aloha, Hawaii. Yes, um, this is a great technology and it's certainly needed. And so the big question is, well, how do you pay for it, right? Things in the economy aren't exactly where they were six or nine months ago. And so uh, fortunately for energy advisors, we've been funding projects without upfront capital for many years now. Uh, in Hawaii, about the past five years. And historically, we funded energy efficiency projects um, and renewable, solar PV, battery storage, et cetera. And you can, Haley, if you don't mind, you can put that first slide up. Thank you, please. And so the idea is, okay, now we've got this technology to get us back to some type of normal. How do you pay for it? Well, what we've been doing is we have really good arrangements with several of the banks here on Hawaii, Central Pacific Bank, Bank of Hawaii, and First Hawaiian Bank. And they have been over the past several years funding our projects for energy efficiency and renewables. And the entire time, the whole story has been, how do we help you pay for these upgrades through energy savings? Well, it's a small step to go from energy efficiency to COVID disinfection, COVID upgrades, whatever that solution may be, is that we can now combine those COVID upgrades with your typical energy efficiency and your solar PV projects, of which there are many to do on the island. And it's not magic. It's just that when you start at 26 cents a kilowatt hour and you're running air conditioning seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, there is a lot of savings to be had. Uh, LED lighting itself usually saves about 70%. Solar PV, you can produce close to 100% of what you normally would. So there's a lot of excess savings that are created. And this is not a new model. This model has been around for quite a while. For 20 plus years, folks in Hawaii have been using power purchase agreements to install solar PV. Someone installs it on your building, you use the production to save energy. It's a, it's a very small step to then take it to efficiency in the building as well as COVID upgrades because the solution that Andy has presented really is a combination LED COVID upgrade. So you, you have this very unobtrusive product that needs to be installed in Hawaii anyways, LED upgrades, and now you've got a solution to your COVID issue. So if you could put the next slide up, Haley, I would appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. So what can this include? Well, a large array of different improvements. First off, COVID upgrades, but we're currently looking at projects on the island that include mechanical systems, transformers, building controls, EV charging is a big uh, in initiative uh, in, in, in the state right now, and that can very easily be worked into that. Water saving. So it's, it's taking that power purchase agreement, and as I was mentioning to Howard the other day, our, our goal is to reduce your energy usage before you start producing new energy. That's been missing at points in Hawaii's history where you put a lot of solar up, great idea. What have you done though to improve the efficiency inside your building? And so the goal is let's make you efficient first, let's make you COVID free, and then now let's produce as much energy from solar that we can possibly do. Next uh, slide, please, Haley. So what are some of the benefits? Well, the first big benefit is that there's zero upfront capital here. 
And again, this is not a black block. It's, it, it's, it's not magic. What we use is the service agreement, a lot like a PPA for solar. The customer enters into a, a multi-year service agreement with us. And that can be three years, five years, seven, 10, 20. We're doing all of the above here on the islands already. It depends on what you decide to put in there, what the scope is and your financial situation. What we try and do is get you to a cash flow neutral or a cash flow positive situation, meaning you're going to do all these improvements. And not only is it going to be break even for you, it's going to create some net revenue event for you, which, again, is important in our current environment. Uh, we, we all need to be able to have some cash flow that helps us get back to that to that new normal. There are a lot of other benefits on the financial side, because remember, it's not a loan or a lease. It's a little different. It's a service agreement. So we're not encumbering the existing asset, which will mean a lot for some of the commercial real estate guys, mean nothing for others. But it, we're trying to minimize the financial impact on the organization while still giving you those benefits. Uh, next, next slide, please, Haley. So what's this Kamaina come come fund? Well, it's been our goal now for the past five plus years, and that's why we originally approached Central Pacific Bank, uh, a, a local bank that has roots in the community, et cetera. And so the goal here, as Howard mentioned, is how can we create jobs, more jobs, more living wage jobs, right? We don't need any more servers. What we'd like is jobs that can pay the rent, that can pay for your kid's college, and that can give you that quality of life. Well energy efficiency in general are those living wage jobs. Solar PV installation are those living wage jobs. So our goal is, has always been, we work very closely with Hawaii Energy, uh, those in charge of the rebates and the incentives on the island. We work very close with the local banks. That's important. It creates local jobs, our profits stay on island. We are plowing that back into the island. That is our goal. We want to be here. Uh, we have selected, and we think there's an incredible opportunity in Hawaii because of the high cost of power. So we can take that. We can reduce your carbon. We can help Hawaii become carbon neutral by 45. We can create those living wage jobs, and we can help make the air quality inside our buildings livable so we can all get back to work. And so that's kind of the idea here is, is that we're really plowing this back into Hawaii because that is important to us at Energy Advisors. Uh, next, next slide, please, Haley. So how has this been applied so far? Well, interestingly enough, we were uh, implementing an LED and solar PV project at Mauna Lani Assisted Living here on Oahu. Well, of course, as you know, assisted livings have been unfairly hit by the COVID virus. So as we were completing this project in fits and starts as there were outbreaks, um, the CFO of Mauna Lani has now approached us and said, hey, look, we're gonna need to do something to, to with, with, with air quality. So what we've, this is an example of a project in process. If you look at the lower right-hand corner of the slide, I won't spend a lot of time on anything, but there's, a, there's gonna be approximately $83,000 of annual savings net cash flow positive for Monolani once the LED and solar is complete, which should be in about 10 days now. So what we're now doing is looking, working with Monolani on how do we incorporate these, these, these COVID cleansing events, this LED. And it's perfect because we're doing the LED. So now we can implement some of this improvements in their, in their building. And frankly, it will still be probably a net cash flow positive event once the COVID upgrades have been completed, but now they can have the comfort that that air is being cleansed on, on, on an ongoing basis. And additionally, what's interesting is that this doesn't need to happen all at once. We staged it, the LED, the solar, and now the COVID upgrades. And that's important for some folks because obviously you can't, not a one can take it down all at once. So we have this flexibility in working within our Kaimana Fund to be able to fund these in stages as needed 
and as the, the, the time permits, because in the assisted living, you've got to take a lot of precautions before you're doing this, obviously. And so we feel that this is a really opportune time and, and, the, and the ability to take that energy efficiency, that renewable and pay for those COVID upgrades, while again, creating those type of living wage jobs that are, that are needed on the island. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And, and thank you all for your time, Howard. We appreciate you letting us on. Mm -hmm. Very inspiring talk. And I should have mentioned right up front that I'm with the Hawaii State Energy Office and our mission is 100% clean energy by 2045. And thanks to people like you, we just may beat that. We yes. may have 100% clean energy before then. We are going really, really rapidly. Another point, I keep track of the residential kilowatt hour rate by my own personal bill. Just arrived a couple of days ago, 28.2 cents yeah. per kilowatt hour, making that payback even uh, uh, quicker. And since you have your workforce in Hawaii, we've been looking at um, job creation in, in the clean energy environment. Some people are having to fly in technicians from the mainland. Apparently you've got all your technical people right here. So you yeah, keep- So, so you know, that's, an, that, that's an important point. Our uh, goal is yeah, to yeah. work with locally well-known reputable firms that have been in the market. We work with Amoresco, mm -hmm. we work with Hawaii Energy Systems. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we work with those folks that have been on the island, have the labor. We're not here to, to fly, fly people in and out. Uh, and so that's, mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned 28 cents. So the comparison for folks is I live sometimes in Seattle, it's seven cents. So you understand <laughs> yes. the Delta, that's, mm -hmm. that's the opportunity. Yeah, and even in expensive California, I think it's around 14 cents. Yeah, we're on 14 to 18. 17, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. yeah. still you got us beat. <laughs> <laughs> Way, but be, unfortunately and hopefully yeah. as we get more and more clean energy we'll actually be able to reduce yes. eventually they, that uh, kilowatt hour cost and then finally tiny little uh, note um, when you reduce the lighting wattage you're also reducing the heat created by Absolutely. those lights which enables you in turn to reduce the air conditioning load Yes, in, in, in yes. fact, a, a, a material portion of energy savings that occur are because of that heat load reduction. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, any final words of wisdom? We have less than a minute left. No, well, I wish you all the best and let's hear it for a clean, green Hawaii. Yes. This is Howard Wig with Anthony Amendola and Andrew Miller. Thank Mahalo. you so much. Mahalo. And keep up the excellent, excellent work. We're going to have a clean, prosperous Hawaii. Thanks to people like you. Aloha. See you Mahalo. next time.